Hey guys, it's Keith with Train by Tex. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Autologic Drive Pro. So unlike most of our videos where we do like a diagnostic procedure or some kind of new uh, fancy way of using something, we're actually just going to cover a tool today. Uh, so I've had the Autologic Drive Pro for quite a few months, and when I first got it, I didn't have time to take advantage of their, hey, we'll walk you through the tool and show you some cool things with it. I was like, ah, I've used every scan tool under the sun. Uh, I'm pretty good at this. I'll, I'll just kind of go with it. I didn't really have time. Well, that was a mistake because... I've learned now that I should have took the training because there's some pretty sweet stuff I didn't know it did in the beginning. Anyways, we're going to highlight some of the things it does, uh, but we're just going to kind of walk through a procedure that I do fairly often. This is a 2011 BMW 528i with the N52 engine. Um, this vehicle was in the collision in the front and quite a few things were replaced. Um, the airbag lights on, there were a couple airbags replaced, I don't think the module had to be done, I don't know if they had it sent off or what was going on. Uh, we're going to cover kind of like pulling reports, uh, sending that information to the, to the customer, how we can do that. Um, and, and my procedure is a little different, and in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to pull a report, and then I'm going to uh, save that. I'm going to clear all the codes, I know, I'm going to do that to see what sets back as a hard fault. And this isn't going to tell me that everything's fixed. Like if I get no codes back, that doesn't mean that we're done. Uh, we've got to perform a couple test drives and ensure everything else has been done. We've got to review some factory service information in order to um, confirm that any repairs that they've done are complete because there may be other things that need to be done. Uh, but this is kind of just an introductory to the tool and kind of how we used it for this. And you know, it was an investment for me on the European side, but it's one that, uh, that has paid off greatly. It's been a fantastic tool. So let's take a look and get right into it. All right, so once the tool's booted up, we go ahead and select the Drive Pro option, not the Drive Wrap, because we're not performing a remote assist programming. We're doing diagnosis. Uh, so when we load that up, we're gonna be given a few options there. And this is gonna be in real time, so you can kind of see how quickly the tool will move uh, through the menus and open and close stuff. So there are a few options available there. You can see we have a diagnostic network tab, a whole internet browser, but we're going to select the Drive Pro European software because that's what we're going to work on. And that's going to load up here. And if you had installed any updates, they would kind of be installing now, like if you downloaded them earlier. Now from here, we'll select BMW since that's what we're working on. And then when that pulls up, we're going to go ahead and select uh, Determined Vehicle from March of 1998. So basically, it'll auto-ID anything by VIN number that's made after 98. And of course, it pulls it up. It's our F10 chassis 528i with an N52. So we'll click Continue. Now we're going to select Quick Test, which is at the top right there. And that's what we're going to go ahead and perform first. Like I said, we want to do a test and have a report to print off or to send to the customer so we know before we touch the vehicle, what kind of DTCs were stored and in what modules? Because this thing was in a collision. So once it finishes the quick test, it's going to actually create a report for you. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of information on this report. Starting at the top with just vehicle ID information and uh, time and date stamps, and then going down with all the modules with faults, including the fault code and the description. And then below all of our faults, which <laughs> they are plentiful, we have a message about notable information of the RDC is no communication. So that's the tire pressure monitor uh, computer, the module. And then below that's all the modules with no faults. So at the very top, there's a little print button uh, or an email button. You can select either one. I click the print so I can type in an email and send it. So I've sent this report to my personal email. Not you can send it to the shops too if you'd like. So let's go ahead and do like I said before. We're going to back out of this and we're going to click the second to the top option. It says clear and reread all fault codes. It's the second arrow down from the top. And then we'll go ahead and click continue. And that'll clear the faults out and then rerun that quick test.
Now this one's going to run the, the same as the last one did, and preferably, uh, you know, we would have nothing left over if there were no faults to repair. Uh, but that's never the case, especially if we've made a video about it, right? And again, this is in real time, so this one's taking a little longer. So the report comes up, and we can see that all we have is the uh, a single code in the ICMQL, along with the gateway module and the footwell module, because, well, it's BMW, so it's got to have a footwell module code. Um, and the major concern with this one was the airbag light. It was in the collision, it had an airbag light on, they replaced some components, you know, so... We send that report to ourselves again, so we have our second step. But like I said, our major concern was the airbag fault light, this light. And that light is no longer present, and there are no codes for it. But our indicator light is on, which would not be a big deal, except for the driver's side buckle is connected. I always check that. It's always important. So let's go into the body uh, section of modules, or the group of body modules. So we'll select that. And then from there, we're going to go into safety functions. And again, that's just what modules have safety functions associated. Um, and there are very few on this model. So we'll go in and then on this one, we're going to go into the crash safety module, the ACSM. That's going to house the information we want to see. Now, the groups of information is the diagnostic request. And that's basically live data. Um, it's, of course, BMW, so it's labeled slightly differently. So we'll select that, and then from there, our group of data PIDs are the seatbelt buckle contacts, because that's specifically what we want to look at. So it's set up kind of like a GM. They're broken down in groups of data. And then from here, we have all of our live data PIDs, and you can see they're slightly moving around because there's you know small, minor little things happening. Uh, but what's very interesting about this tool is the ability to graph. Unlike the factory BMW tool, which makes that nearly impossible, um, we're going to graph this information. So if we go down and we select and just click on where it says not connected by the seatbelt buckle for the driver's side, that's actually graphing that data PID now. But I'm clicking it on and off and nothing's happening. So if we take our pointer and drag it from the right to the left of that data PID, it actually brings that data PID up full screen, which is, this is another fantastic, fantastic benefit and feature of this tool. And you can pan left and right over your time base because you can't really change your time base, but you can zoom in and out on the waveform. Um, I say waveform, the graph, the data PID graph. But there's nothing happening. So instead of getting a wiring diagram, we just opened the plastic around the connector so we could get directly to the contact switch. And just a visual inspection, we can see the contact switch itself has uh, been broken on the bottom end. And we don't know if it's from the collision or if it was before, but that's going to have to be replaced. So we went ahead and graphed some more data just to take a look, and I, I kind of wanted to show you, and you can take this and you can unbuckle and buckle the seatbelt connector, and we can see our graph. I don't know the refresh rate on the tool or any of the stats on that on it versus something else, but what I can tell you is that uh, just like having a great aftermarket tool, it does add the benefit of having live data graphing, which again, in ISTA is kind of hard to do. So we can go through and click a couple other data PIDs as well, and then we can graph multiple things at a time. So that's, an, again, another major benefit of this tool. Now, something else I was asking Chris about, and it's, you know, Chris Martino works for them as well, one of our Train by Text guys. So I called him and said, hey, man, uh, can you show me how to do the graphing and show me how to take screenshots? He said, yeah, click the settings button at the bottom. It'll open up three options. And the one to the far right, if you select it, it's actually going to create a screen capture. So we did that and saved it. And if you go back to the main screen, you can see that the file manager is there, and that's where you would see uh, all of your screen captures. So we were done for the most part. We told the shop to get a seatbelt buckle. This is a picture of the passenger side, but they needed to replace it. And after they replaced it, we were going to have to come out and do a function because the seat had been removed. So I didn't record it, but let's take a look at what that takes to be done forming the standardization of the seat module due to the pretensioner replacement. It moves the seat full travel all the way forward, all the way backwards, all the way up, all the way down. My recommendation is not to be in the vehicle when it's doing this because, uh, well, if you're a big guy like me, you might get squished.
All right, guys, so I hope you liked the video. Again, it's not like a diagnostic procedure. There's nothing really new and profound here. I just thought I'd show you guys uh, some of the things this tool will do. And there's a lot of other stuff. I mean, this tool is also a RAP, a remote assist programming unit. So you could call up Drew Tech and get the vehicle ready and, or Autologic technically, they are both Opus Group companies, and tell them you'd like to have them perform a flash on the vehicle and they can do that through your tool for you. Uh, it's a cost. It does have a cost associated with it, but it's there. It's an option. It's one more thing because it does have a J2534 compliant device inside of the tool to actually act as the communication gateway. So the tool is super powerful. It has a lot of functions. It is great for BMW, Land Rover, Jaguar, has lots of coding and programming built into the tool for those models. There's all kinds of stuff being added all the time. So again, uh, great tool. I'm happy with it. Uh, a couple of us have some Autologic products, and so far we've all been pretty impressed with what they'll do. Just like any aftermarket tool, there's going to be some kind of uh, holes or missing pieces. No tool's perfect, but, you know, it is what it is. As always, guys, we'd like to remind you to get out there and get to some training events. You've got to spend some time in some instructor-led training. At the very least, you'll be able to network with other individuals like you to have some passion for the industry. Uh, and please... Any questions, comments, concerns, put them in the comments, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, have a good one.